Welcome to Email and Beyond, the podcast bringing you all the latest email marketing and other complimentary marketing channel tips, tricks, industry chat, brand insights, and more every two weeks. Join me, Kate Barrett, founder and CEO of eFocus Marketing, and Richard Wall, marketing campaign manager at Spotler, as we talk you through the good, the bad, and the ugly of marketing, and how you can create a more intelligent strategy that gets results. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Email and Beyond. I'm Richard Wall, marketing campaign manager at Spotler UK. And I'm Kate Barrett, founder and CEO of eFocus Marketing. Right, Kate, what are we talking about today? Oh, okay, so, this is one of our kind of first episodes of the new podcast, and I think it's a great way to start the year talking about trends All for right. 2024. Yes. But I want to kind of put something in here. It's not really trends. It's more what should you be focusing on? Because mm-hmm. do you know what? Every single year, brands like ours come out with these trends. This is what's going to happen in email this year. This is what you should be looking out for. And actually, it's the, this is what you should be looking out for that is the key thing. Because trends come and go. Right. Some things stick, some things don't. It depends how the technology progresses. It depends, you know, what brands are able to do. So I think, you know, let's, let's kind of ban the trends bit from this podcast episode right. and just talk about what should be your focus for 2024. What are the elements brands should be working on? Let's, let's focus on that. So we're talking about what's evolved that's going to stick and I think so. a longer term than just what's cool this month. Yeah, exactly. Because you know, really, not a lot changes in email, does it? <laughs> no, exactly not. not a massive amount changes year to year. So when we kind of trot out these trends, in all honesty, it's the same thing over and over again. So for me, it's really, what have we seen kind of over the last year, the last two years? Where do we think that's going to go for the next year? So let's focus in on that. So if I if I kind of come at this from the B to C side, and maybe you yeah. come at it from the B to B side, what do you think is one of the things for B2B marketers that they should be focusing on this year as we're at the start of the year now, but at any point throughout the year, what's that core focus that B2B marketers should be zoning in on when it comes to email marketing? I think focus is exactly the right word because what worries me or keeps me up most of the time is should we be doing X shiny new thing that has come along? Mm. And quite honestly, quite a lot of time, the answer is no. Like we, Spotlight does have a TikTok account, believe it or not. It's got a few bits and pieces. You've been on. dancing on your TikTok account. No, 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 no one needs to see that. Yeah. <laughs> That's the after dark edition. Okay. <laughs> no, like it's, like we, yeah, it's cool, it's fun, it's interesting. We can, there's bits we can do about it, but it's a question of how does that, firstly, are our audience on that platform? and in a B2B SaaS environment, the answer seems to be so far not particularly. Mm-hmm. I mean, without doing sort of gen- generalizations of different generations, which is very difficult to say. <laughs> yeah, it's well, it's a tongue twister. But we tend, you know, we're, we're not targeting Gen Z with our, if we're not, millennials are starting to come, starting to, the older segment of millennials are probably into those kind of buying positions that make up our primary personas. Mm-hmm. But a lot of senior management still are not in, they're not the target demographic for TikTok and thus they're not really worth uh, being part of that. I'm not saying don't use it, this, this, this is the key thing, I'm not saying, I'm saying be deliberate about what you use because more than ever, and this is you know, a trend that's not going to change, yeah. is the number of options you have, the number of channels you have, the number of ways you can reach people is just going to keep going and it's not going to stop and you will burn yourself out and do a really bad job on all of them if you try and play in every yeah right like, by strategy half the strategy is choosing what not to do yes definitely so by all, so the, the first thing i did was go th- like our, is tiktok part of our social strategy this year and i went through um a list of spotless top competitors mm. And I started going through our, and I moved on to going through our, to, to what we call our top target accounts. Most of them are on there, and therefore, I mean, there's always a part of my brain that says, oh, if competitors are on there, are we 
are we getting ahead of them by doing this? But I don't think they are. I think most of our competitors are, are business savvy enough to have done, done the research the same way that we are. And they're not seeing the value in it. And I don't think Spotler gets value from TikTok at the moment. So the thing to do is, firstly, make sit down and make a list of all the different outlets that are there for you. Because there's a lot. And, you know, if stuff's working, keep at it. If you're not doing it yet, you might not need to. And if if you say, look, I'll, me, I'll already do on TikTok, but we haven't got the resources to effectively add it to the mix, fine. Be good at what you're doing, because you wouldn't have lasted in business in 2023 if what you were doing didn't work. Yeah. So, so focus, yeah. really understand who are your personas, who's your audience, where are they hanging out, yes. and where can you, and how can you best connect yes. with them through that channel? Yeah, what do they want from that? For, yeah. So keep up on TikTok for a minute. So they don't, they don't want you dancing on TikTok? No, Is that what you're no, saying? No, not so much. Right? So I, I'm putting in the boat for Rich the, dancing the, on TikTok. The, yeah, email marketing dance. It's the new, new Gangnam style or whatever it's the... Oh, no. <laughs> Is that going to be for our final episode of the podcast that we're going to have to come up with just dance? dance? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, no dance, but just be... <laughs> Do the email and say, yeah, what they want from the fact that, you know, I go on TikTok, I'm a marketer, but TikTok is my I'm going to switch off my brain for a bit and just, just find some funny stuff and some interesting stuff. It's not where I'm going looking for B2B SaaS solutions. Yeah. And so, as a B2B brand, it doesn't fit into my marketing mix for a B2C brand. It may well be different because the way to build entertaining content and, you know, seeing what cool stuff other people are doing with product and that. That's much more the B2C wheelhouse, but yeah. B2B, in a, certainly as far as I can tell, not worth at the moment. So yes, look at, take a time to look at the channels and be prepared and di- a digression that could be in Marketing 101, which is coming up at some point, yeah, I can't remember when the that in, but that will be in the series. People, everyone has an opinion on marketing and I reckon your CEO will probably come to you and say, why are we not on TikTok? And if your solution, if your answer is, uh, uh, um, that's not convincing. If your answer is, our competitors aren't there, our key target isn't there, and we haven't got the internal resources to make it high quality enough to be proud of putting it out, you're golden. Absolutely. So I, I love that one. So that's kind of as a general kind of digital marketing planning. Love that. And if you're B2C, I think it, it's a great place to start as well, isn't it? Understand oh, yeah. your audience and how you want to communicate with them. From an email side, what do you see in terms of B2B email marketing? Are there any elements or tactics that you've seen over the last year that you think, okay, yeah, we need to double down on this this year or, you know, kind of going over the next year or so? Are there any tactics like that for email specifically that you've seen? I mean, it's what's the one that surprises me. This, again, is an argument against trends. People still aren't taking as much advantage of personalization in their emails as they could. And especially e- pers- personalization <laughs> and subject lines. We've done, we did a whole white paper and I ran a uh, webinar on it a little while ago. It works, like it really, like, you know, I did graphs of, you know, performance of subject lines with personalization without. It's like a 50% improvement mm. on your open rate. And I know open rate isn't the only thing to care about, but it matters. Like, it just, it's not it's the starting thing. point, right? Yeah. It, it's the starting point for engagement. and. The subject line is one element of those kind of pieces within the inbox that drive it through, but tweaks to that definitely help. And I think it's also taking that personalization from kind of, I guess, you know, the 101 point of yeah. put, you know, put a name in the subject yeah. line or uh, bringing in other relevant data that connects into their real world in the subject line. And it, it takes it through into the email then. And that's certainly something that we've seen in, in B2C. And, you know, I mean, this has been around for years, right? Personalization, using your data, it's not a new thing. And this is why we don't want to do trends today. But it should be your focus because what we see is a, a tougher and tougher environment for getting your emails to stand out in the inbox, yeah. getting that engagement, getting that share of view within the inbox is, is difficult. But the more you can connect your content to your subscriber, what they've told you about themselves, previous behavior, previous conversion or purchase data, you know, amending the products and services that you suggest in your emails based on what they've done before. The better you can get at that, the better your results are going to be going forward. And it's, but it's streamlining it as well, right? Yes. Because as marketers, chances are we're not going to have a thousand people who can then go and build a thousand different variations of our email. 
So we've got to use the technology to then get that strategy implemented using dynamic content, using you know, lead scoring from a B2B side or RFM segmentation from a B2C side. Use those segments, use that data to feed into your messaging. And for me, that that is the core of everything for B2B and B2C of what we should be doing this year and every single yeah. year. Understand your audience. It comes back to what you said, right? Understand, okay, so what platform are they on? And if it's email, brilliant, okay? So how do we best serve them with email? What are they expecting from us? What are those expectations we've set on sign up? How do we deliver that? How do we make sure there's a real benefit for them? And using their data is absolutely critical to that. So for me, I, I totally agree with that from a B2B and B2C side, data, personalization, it's kind of old hat now, but so many brands still aren't doing it. Yeah. So I, I would start there, definitely. So, there's almost there's an eye there, like, get better at what you do already. Because yes. you're, you're a business, you, if you're working in a business and you've got time to sit and listen to a podcast, you're already doing something, right? Because you don't have, you're not churning constantly on this wheel of whatever bit of marketing it is you currently run. Something's working. Yeah. So just get better. Like, ma, ma, be the, make the best possible email it can be before you even look at making video or podcasts, whatever Yeah, or go to a different channel or focus on the channel that you've, you've got yeah. and make the most of it, right? Yeah, because you can also, with something like email, We've got the history. This is one of the things we were going to talk about. Our other that email has staying power. So you've got a lot more history to look back on. Sort of a, a scientific example, if you want. That you've got more historic data to say, oh yeah, what did we change this year to last year that resulted in ten percent better attention or five percent worse engagement or? Yeah. How is our subscriber behaviour changing? Or yeah, I love yeah. that. It's brilliant, and I think. Leading on from that, we've got uh, an episode coming up on the podcast all about artificial intelligence. Yes. And, you know, the advances in that just over the, the last year or so have been massive. The amount of platforms that are now out there that you can use, obviously ChatGPT is our yes. kind of standard middle ground, right? Uh, and there's the, the free account on that that I know that you and I both play around with a lot for our clients and for our own internal campaigns. But again, it's understanding, you know, artificial intelligence is great, but there are lots of different areas of it. There's AI helping you to create content you've got to make sure you plug in the right instructions to get the content out that you want but that helps with time resources getting content out there repurposing content so taking it from a blog post to an email to social media posts you know it, it's brilliant at doing that but also it can help you to analyze your data go deeper with your data what happens it just connects me to what you were saying about you know what were those results what worked what didn't work Use AI to feed that. Use AI to do that analysis. Use AI to say, okay, so what do we do next? You know, if you're a more advanced business, you might start to use propensity modeling within your segmentation. So this person has taken these actions based on what we know about the other audience and other people that have taken those actions. Here is the next best action for them or product to buy or blog to read or piece of content that you want to kind of serve up to them or download, whatever that might be. So I think for me, connecting into those initial areas of, of planning and focus for, for this year, seeing how you can use AI to make you a better human, a better communicator, a better marketer. It's not there to take over our jobs. We've got to feed it. We've got to tell it what to do. And I think for me, whether it's a trend or a focus for this year, is how do we use that evolving technology to make our lives easier, make our communication with subscribers better, and really accelerate our, our progress and what we're able to do. So I think AI is, is another one that yeah, it's, not, it's not new. We've had it well, 2023, we've all been yeah. playing around with it, but now is the time to really kind of double down on those efforts of what you've seen work, what you've seen help you. You know, for me, the change from going from, oh, 
crap, I've got to write an email or I've got to write a social media post or whatever it is to say, okay, this is who my audience is. This is what I want to be talking about. Here's the key benefits of it. Help me put something together. AI has been phenomenal for that. But I think we need to not forget that it's not just content-based. That's something we can all get involved in and very quickly you know, fire up chat GPT and put some instructions. But now we need to be thinking about the evolution of that and making sure that we use it in our data, in our decision making, in our targeting going forward. So for me, that's going to be a focus for clients in 2024. Yeah, I think that's quite a useful point of technologies going beyond what they just do. Mm. So if you're talking about um, tech that makes it easier to produce video content, mm. what does that then allow you to do? It's not just, oh, we can make a video. Why are you making the video? Are you making the video because your product is very visual? Are you making it because that's the best way for your audience to learn? Is it because you're looking to surprise them with a new thing that you're, you're, you're seeing or maybe a sort of decline in engagement and you think, well, we've never done a video before, this will make people go, oh, never seen a video from me focused before, that's, that's brand new. Um, so there's a lot, so it's, I think we're, we're marching on, we're surfing around the whole thing of being really strategic in yeah. 2024 and because all the tools are going to, oh, you know, yeah, chat DGP, G, chat GPT <laughs> prompt to to make six social media posts that will get you 100 customers. Well, great, what do you do to keep them once you've got them? Yeah. There's a lot, there's the folk, the tools right now, the way it's being presented is a lot about, you can do this right now. So what does that mean? And for the, I mean, this, this is what we're saying for 2024 rather than for Q1 or for, for January. Mm -hmm. Because we have, we have to be looking bigger than that. A lot of the stuff we do, we know that it doesn't pay off immediately. You know, the, Proving the ROI of marketing is one battle that I think we will have to fight far too many times. Oh, yeah. And yeah. That, that comes to, and we, we do better than that if we're going into it with the longer term vision rather than just jumping in. Email and Beyond is a Spotler and eFocus marketing production. Spotler is the all in one sales and marketing software for small and medium sized businesses. Our suite of products covers email marketing, website personalization and tracking, social media management, and CRM. If you want to find out more about how our software can drive your success, visit spotler.co.uk forward slash email and beyond. I love trying new things. I, I, I'm happy to talk about trends as well as longer term yeah. stuff. And I think you learn better by experimenting yeah. with these different models, making a new segment, building a new Massive. channel. You cannot learn without testing and trying and failing. Yes. You know, <laughs> because when you test and try something, you're not going to have the right answer every time. And that is the whole point of a test. And I, I love that because, again, testing is nothing new. Testing, we've been doing it for years, right? But actually, the difference, if we're looking at what should we focus on in 2024, strategic testing. Why are we testing it? What are we testing? Who are we Who testing, are we testing it up? Absolutely, yeah. because what works for one segment of your audience won't work for another. So really, that, that strategic view, that breakdown, that, you know, I mean, if we can attribute an ROI, great, but there's that holistic impact of, of everything we're doing as well, multiple touch points, that kind yeah. of omni-channel approach. Um, but test and learn, that one is a bit, it's an oldie but a goodie. Yeah. Oldie but a goodie. But no, what you're testing, why you're testing it, and who you're testing it to, absolutely. Anything else you'd kind of throw in as so, key elements? Yeah. I hope it follows on from there, but metrics and KPIs. Yes. In the last year, they are, let's take this, take it out. Are there KPIs or metrics that are brand new? Are there ones that were good and they've died? Where, where are yeah. we in what marketers should be measuring and what they should be taking as the thing that they present to particularly sales or violence, ones that you know, need to explain the impact that they're having. Definitely. I think in 2023, there was a lot of talk about Apple MPP stopping, you know, those, those, well, it's not stopping open tracking, it's inflating it, isn't it? Yeah. Actually, it's inflating, it's the other way. So look, for me, open rate is the metric that has never, ever, <laughs> <laughs> been a reliable metric and yet so many brands rely on it as the what was our open rate for this email what's happening with our open rate it doesn't 
doesn't matter if you get 100% open rate, brilliant, but if no one takes the action that you want, what good does that do you? Because, you know, you could say, win an iPad in your subject line, they go into the email, it's nothing to do with winning a bloody iPad, (laughs) you know, whatever it is. So we've got to understand what are the metrics that are telling us that our end goal has happened. Now, 99.9% of the time, your end goal is not going to be for someone to open that email. And even if it's just for them to have a look at the content, actually, well, then what we want to be looking at is read rate. We want to be looking at how long did our audience stay in the email. So we need to be developing our view of these metrics. So I think open rate, take it with a pinch of salt, look at it and go, oh, interesting. And then forget about it, in all honesty. (laughs) Move deeper. What is that end goal? So obviously clicks is the first thing within the email. But we can start looking at click reach, for example. So if you've got a series of emails, how many individual people opened the series of six emails versus how many were multi-openers? You know, how many uniques did you get? What was that kind of reach of the view of those people that, that are in your audience? So I think... We can go deeper like that within our email metrics. And of course, we've got our unsubscribes, our complaint rates, our bounces that are telling us about data quality, all of those. But I think as we go through 2024, you know, I I read something a little while ago about uh, following on from the changes to open rate tracking. We might now end up with the same issue with click tracking. So let's watch and see what happens with that over 2024, whether or not, you know, that comes to fruition. But again, so what we need to do is now go deeper, okay? They opened our email, check, clicked on the link, check. Then what did they do? Did you want them to read an article, download something, buy a product, sign up for something? What is it you wanted them to do? Because at the end of the day, that's what counts. Nothing else before it. The stuff before it, whether it's kind of Google Analytics website data, email click tracking or opens, whatever it is, are indicators and little lights that point us in the direction of how we can improve what we're doing. But the end result, it is static, right? It is. When you send out an email, email. Yeah. Now, what's not static within that is that you could send out the best email but if your website and your landing pages let you down, then they're not going to convert. Yeah. So again, it's looking at that entire journey when you're thinking about metrics and thinking, okay, so at this stage, what are the metrics that are giving me those indicators, those lights of what I might need to change? But what was that end goal? Now, the issue with that, and maybe this is probably a, um, an issue for another episode, okay. attribution modeling. Oh, yes. It's so damn difficult to get a good attribution model that takes into account the impact of of multiple different marketing strategies on that end result. Because just sending in one email, yes, might lead to that end result, but the chances are they probably saw 10 emails before that, and maybe they've seen your posts on LinkedIn as well, and they've, you know, it's those multiple touch points. And we know now it used to be, I think, seven touch points before someone did something positive with your business. I think it's over 20 now. And I think for B2B, it might be even more than that as well. You've you've really got to connect with them. So again, when it comes to understanding your metrics, we've got a problem generally with attribution modeling. A lot of us will use last click, which is fine. It tells you the last channel to send someone through, which has value in itself it doesn't tell you the impact of all of those other efforts on what you're doing. So attribution modeling is is a metric, a way of finding those metrics that definitely should be focused on and should be looked at, but it's a wider issue and it's a wider business issue as to how that is done for each business. I, I think what, what I've learned every time I've dived into attribution modeling is pick what you're going to do and stick with it. I mean, spot more generally, so the way we've been doing recently is, is a lot more first click attribution. What's the, how do we get them onto the website in the first place? Is the rest of it you can track? Yeah. And there will be huge amounts of variation, but what's the thing that got them onto the website? Because we're, 
we're pretty confident in our marketing. I'm going to say that out loud. But we 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 are pretty confident from from looking at historical data and how we've done converting and generating leads and all this all the all the other bits. But we're pretty confident that once we get someone's attention, we can learn about them, treat them well enough successfully yeah. that we can convert them. So for us, how they got to us. Is, is the most important. Yeah. And I think that's fine, but I think yeah. if you decide to try and bounce between last click, multi touch, first click, you're going to get yourself confused. So for me, I mean, I think there is, a, there's a, there is a conundrum there to solve, which would be fascinating. But yeah, stick, choose what you're measuring, be deliberate. This is the same thing I was saying about convincing your CEO. If you can say to these other stakeholders in the business, there is a deliberate and strong reason that we are doing what we are doing, that's what they can. They don't care about whether your TikTok has audio or not. They, they care about, oh, is marketing delivering the things that it needs to deliver? Yeah. And if the answer is yes, good. If not, yeah. it's not. And as long as you have a deliberate measure to say, this is what we're doing, this is why we're doing it, and this is how it's going, yeah. you're in a much more secure position. Yeah, and I, I love that because actually what you've identified there is what metrics are right for the activity that you're doing. So whether you are focusing on acquisition or you're focusing on retention, there are different metrics that you would want to bring in and look at within each of those to move you forward. So I think, again, that's something for your planning this year and beyond. What's your focus? What tells you that you have achieved success based on that focus, whether it's acquisition or retention, whether you're B2B or B2C, look at those deeper metrics that tell you, yes, I have achieved that. Open rate is not going to tell you whether you've achieved that or not. Because one channel doesn't fill one function. So that's, 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 that's we'll talk one. about this in our series. So we've, got, we've got two episodes, we've been a BC and a B2B on critical workflows we to have. And yeah, you'll treat an acquisition workflow different than a retention mm-hmm. workflow. Yeah. They both be email workflows, and they may well have the same number of steps in them, but they're doing different things. So, for acquisition, not to spoil the entire episode, but for acquisition, getting people onto the website in a B two B context yeah. is most important. For retention, yeah. it's obviously team signing up, renewing their contract, yeah. buying your item. So that's a, a really good point that it's not is email doing well? Is is retention email doing well? Is acquisition email doing well? Is cost selling? email doing well. And it's completely different, completely different areas, different metrics that you want to be looking at to, to monitor success. So interesting. Okay. Any other kind of focus areas specifically for 2024? I think I think we've covered the core ones. So personalization, strategic testing, understanding your audience, understanding your data, and then understanding those kind of metrics. Any kind of last Thoughts that you want to leave the audience with for today? When I'm thinking, I'm thinking about ethics as one that mm. kind of goes, floats over the top and it's always there in the back, and particularly ethical usage of data. As one of are saying that, yes, there's more ways to gather data than ever, and you should be using that data intelligently and coherently and holistically and whatever other leads you want to <laughs> put on the top of it. But the, it, it comes again to matching customer expectations. That are, are you are you getting to the point where you're knowing thing? It's easy to stop and not think about the human behind it. As we'll do a whole episode on once again. Yeah. But this this summation of data points that you have in your work in your um, CRM or your notebook or wherever it is, there's a person on the end of it. And are you getting the? We're getting so. Business systems are getting so good at inferring and learning things from the data that people might not realise that you, they know. And so I think you have to be very careful about how you're presenting your use of that data. Yeah. Totally, whether that's in your content, timing of when you send messages or put messages out through various channels, really important. Empathy treating your audience like humans, understanding them. And this is where it links into personalization. Yes. Right? Bring it into their real world and what's going to help them, not what's going to help a million people on your list, but what's going to help that person and that person and that person. So I think definitely that's, I think that is the the top trend 
The top plan and focus for 2024, know your audience and serve them in the right way. So thank you very much for listening to another episode. I hope you found that useful and we'll see you on the next episode of Email and Beyond. Speak soon. Bye. If you liked this episode, please follow us on YouTube and subscribe through iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcasts.